Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. Welcome to the next exciting episode in the free game development series hosted over on Dev Game. The entire idea behind the series is to look at the best of free in the world of game development. This means free tools for things like audio, graphics, um, game design, you name it, to resources such as textures, models, and sprites. If it's free and it's for game development, we will focus on it in this series. And today what we are looking at is IDEs, or Integrated, in, integrated, integrated Development Environments. Now this is the way programming was done in the 2000s. But now things are getting more and more back to the way they used to be. People are using a disparate set of tools, their own text editor, and so on. But there's still a lot of space for IDEs in your world. Now, what exactly is an IDE? Well, it's a collection of all of your, um, your needed tools for programming together into one application. Things like uh, code debugger, profiler, editor, um, UI tools quite often. Those are all bundled together into an integrated development environment. Now, you might find that the world of text editors and IDEs overlap somewhat, but don't worry, we've covered that. So if you don't find something on this list, check out um, the main section here. We've got text editors, and there, if it's not here, it is probably there. But the one that we are focused on today is integrated development environments. Now, of course, I will link this down below, but let's jump in and take a look. So this is the link. Uh, we are gonna go through each individual I, um, IDE on this link instead, so let's jump right in. And we're going to start off with the biggest one, and that's Visual Studio. Now, Visual Studio is the granddaddy of Windows-based IDEs. If you are doing uh, development on a Windows platform, even if you're developing for Android or iOS or even Linux, uh, if you're working on a Microsoft machine, Visual Studio Community may be the right choice for you. Now, Community is a version of Visual Studio. There are some limitations here. You need to make less than $1 million as a company, and you need to have something like less than 200 computers in your organization. So there are some limitations, but those are basically it. And otherwise, you get full-blown access to Visual Studio. Now, this guy used to cost over a 1000 bucks, so that is a pretty primo deal there. Uh, it is a huge tool. We're talking between a 2 and a 40 gigabyte install. And you've got coverage for just about every language you can think of. But the big ones are C Sharp, C++, F Sharp, and of course, web development technologies such as Java, JavaScript, and uh, HTML are all enabled in there. But more and more, you're getting support for other languages and a lot of experimental languages in Visual Studio Community. Plus, you've got all kinds of tools for like server management, UI design, you name it, it's in here. This is probably the biggest, grandest IDE of them all. But of course, it is Windows only. Now, next up, we have Qt Create. Now, I'm going to start this one off with a gigantic caveat. This is free for open source development only. If you're using it in commercial development, there is a trial, but otherwise you have to buy it. But if you are doing open source development, this is a free option. Now, this is a C, C++ IDE plus for making QML, um, which is Qt uh, framework scripting language. Uh, so if you're working with Qt, Qt Creator could be a great choice. It's actually a great cross-platform C++ IDE, but their licensing can be a little meh, especially if you're not in open source. Next up, we have Apache NetBeans. Now, NetBeans has had a long storied history. It was some guy's open source project. Sun bought it. Sun was bought by Oracle. Oracle released it out to the Apache Foundation, so it is now a full, true open source, not um, run by a single company kind of project. It is a very actual surprisingly robust IDE. Now, you obviously would think it's all about Java, but it's actually doing Java, JavaScript, HTML5, PHP, C++, and a lot more. It's actually one of the best cross-platform C++ IDEs out there when I was looking before. So if you are interested, check it out. It is completely free and open source. Next up, we have Eclipse. Now, Eclipse is another Java IDE. Eclipse is probably the Java IDE, and people are really torn on Eclipse. I actually find it uh, problematic. I find that I have um, glitches and problems whenever I use Eclipse, but other people swear by it. And this was an open source Java project, but it is also very modular in the way it was implemented. So there is implementation for just about every single programming language you can think of is available for Eclipse via a plugin. Plus, of course, you get UI designers, uh, even um, design document type tools in there. And then a lot of people have used the clips as the basis for their own editing environment. Next up, we have Android Studio. Now, Android Studio um, 
is the official Java IDE for um, Android developers from Google themselves. So if you're doing uh, Android development and you download the SDK, there's a pretty good chance you accidentally downloaded Android Studio as well. Uh, this guy is based on IntelliJ. You can do uh, Java and C++ development, but is really focused on Android development. So you get uh, Android UI creation tools, testing, deployment stuff, all that in there. Um, and it is itself built on, like, as I said, IntelliJ from NetBrains. And speaking of which, here's JetBrains, here is IntelliJ. Now IntelliJ is available in two formats, the community version and the enterprise version. For 90% of developers that aren't in an enterprise setting, uh, that don't need the, the framework stuff that ships with the enterprise version, the community version will be more than enough for you. And plus through extensions and uh, plugins and such, all kinds of languages, Lua, R, you name it, have gotten, uh, I think Rust, all have uh, language support in IntelliJ. The nice thing about IntelliJ, and we're gonna see a little bit more from JetBrains in general, is they all use the same basic UI. So if you wanna switch between different languages, they have an IDE for you. And in the case of the IntelliJ one, it is uh, got a community and free version available. Next up, we have Xcode. Xcode sucks. Let's move on. Okay, sorry. I, I hate Xcode. I've always thought it was garbage. I think a lot of professional developers agree with me, but it was also a poison that was forced down our throats. If you kind of want to take away my hatred of Xcode, let me go with the top level summary. Xcode is the IDE from Apple for Apple development. So if you want to, even if you don't want to work in it, you are ultimately going to need to use Xcode to sign your application to deploy to the iOS app store. So it's important in the ecosystem, no matter how you look at it. As a C++, Objective-C, and Swift-based IDE, uh, yeah, okay. So next up, we have KDevelop. KDevelop is from the KDE guys, the guys that make, um, well, KDev um, KDesktop and uh, the KDE libraries. Uh, they've created this kind of basically at the time, it was a Visual Studio 6 clone. And it is a full-blown IDE that runs on Linux environments for Linux development, uh, specifically for C++ with CMake support. And there's even PHP support in there. Uh, and then since it was basically a clone to start, it's actually developed and gotten a lot better over time. So it is an all-in-one integrated environment in the Linux land, and that's actually not an exceedingly common thing. So if you're looking for something like Visual Studio for C++ development in Linux, uh, this Qt Creator code blocks, and that's about it. So um, check it out if that fits what you are looking for. Uh, next up, we have MonoDevelop. Now, MonoDevelop gets a little confusing because stuff happened. Uh, basically, Mono is an open source implementation of the .NET runtime and the C-sharp language. And then the company behind it, Xamarin, created their own product and they created Mono Develop, an open source IDE for developing .NET applications on Linux, Mac, and Windows. They also created their own proprietary commercial version called Xamarin Studios. La da la da la da. Um, Xamarin, the company, was bought up by Microsoft. So now what we have is MonoDevelop still exists as a project. This is the open source implementation, and you can basically think of it as a .NET, but it does more, plenty of languages actually, but C Sharp is the focus, IDE for Linux. They also took Xamarin Studios, the commercialized version of MonoDevelop uh, for Mac, and renamed it as Visual Studio for Mac. And that is a completely different thing than Visual Studio Code, which is also a completely different thing than Visual Studio Community that we talked about earlier. So clear as mud. Anyways, top level summary, you wanna do C-sharp development on Linux, uh, MonoDevelop might be the best IDE available for you. If you want to do it on Mac, it's Visual Studio for Mac, which is basically they have a same common heritage. And if you want to work on Windows, well, you can still use MonoDevelop. You're probably better off using Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio Full Studio. So uh, Microsoft have made the naming conventions confusing as hell. So hopefully that cleared a little bit up. Probably didn't, but hopefully it did. Uh, next up, we have PyCharm. This is JetBrains again. This is there. So we had IntelliJ earlier, which was a Java-focused IDE that was extensible and so on. This one is a Python-focused IDE. So if you're doing cross-platform or you, if you're working on Linux, Mac, or Windows, and you are doing Python-specific development, def definitely check out PyCharm. It's the same thing. They have a, uh, it's a fully-fledged professional or free community version. So if you don't need the enterprise stuff in the uh, professional version, the free version should work for you. And you can make money using the free versions, by the way. Uh, while we're on that topic, I should stop and mention something else about JetBrains. JetBrains itself, they make commercial IDEs and development tools. So for example, we have AppCode, CLion, DataLore, DataGrip, GoLand, IntelliJ, PHPStorm, PyCharm, Rider, RubyMine, and WebStorm, which is an excellent HTML and JavaScript IDE. Um, they make all of those tools, and those are almost all commercial, except for IntelliJ and PyCharm, which have the community editions available. But 
JetBrains is very open source friendly. So if you're working on an open source project, such as say you're a contributor to the Godot project, you're working on LibGDX or various other projects out there, uh, you can actually get a, in contact with them and they will basically give you a free year of licensing. Or if you're working on an Apache Foundation project, it, it's even simpler. So if you are working in the open source world, a number of these commercial tools are actually available with free licenses. So be sure to check that out. Next up, we have Active State's Komodo IDE. Now this is kind of blurring the line between IDE and code editor, uh, very much focused on web languages, Python, PHP, Perl, Golang, Ruby, and so on, available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, Active State was the maker of probably the most famous um, uh, Python based IDE, but they actually make a number of tools such as Active Python, Active Perl, Active TCL, Active Go, and Active Ruby. And Komodo IDE is sort of something that came from all of that, but it's open source and freely available. So if you're looking at working one of those particular languages, it's worth checking out Komodo IDE. Next up, we have Codeblocks. Codeblocks is based around the WX widgets. Um, UI, sort of like Qt, it's an alternative Qt, KDE, WX widgets, and so on. They go for um, windowing UI library. Codeblocks uses that. It's a free C, C++, Fortran IDE. Um, I actually don't know a whole lot about this. It, it's, it never really drew my fancy, to be honest. I always had access to better or commercial C++ IDE, so I didn't check this one out. But I know a lot of people that basically were working uh, and didn't have a Visual Studio license before it was free. This was the go-to IDE for a lot of them. The only downside to Codeblocks is I haven't really seen an update. Like Since December of 2017, there have been no new updates for Codeblocks. So I don't know if this project is dead or not, but I am mentioning it for completion. So this is a cross-platform C, C++, and Fortran IDE. Next up, this one's a blast from the past. There is a Delphi um, community edition out there from Embarcadero. I had probably said that wrong, but basically this is an evolution of Delphi. And if you've never heard of Delphi, it's actually a programming language from the same guy who actually invented C Sharp and worked on Turbo Pascal back in the day. You can actually think of Delphi as pretty much the missing link between Pascal and C Sharp with a Visual Basics bastard love child mixed in. That is what you get when you work with Delphi. And this was a big thing in the 90s and the early 2000s. And it's kind of gone by the wayside since. Uh, but they're actually still working on this guy. And it's capable of creating mobile based Mac OS, Android, iOS, so on using a sing single code base. You got visual code editors and that kind of stuff. Now, this one comes with a heavy, 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 heavy asterisk in it, though, in that this license. Individual revenue from Delphi applications or country company revenue reaches $5,000 or you have more than five developers you need to upgrade to a commercial license. So this one is more for evaluating or maybe working on free tools, not really for commercial projects unless commercial to you is five grand or less, which hey, don't get me wrong. A lot of games are actually going to make five grand or less and that might be viable to you. And it might also be the case that if you start making more than five grand, well, then you can afford to get the commercial license. So I figured I would include this on here, but that one is by far and away the most restrictive um, revenue limitation of anything on this list. Next up, we have Lazarus. What is Lazarus? Well, this is based around free Pascal. So remember earlier I was talking about Delphi being the la bastard love child of C Sharp and Pascal? Well, this is Pascal. Now, Pascal is kind of fallen out of interest with a lot of uh, people. It, it's not as popular as it used to be, but it's still a great uh, learning language, I suppose, and it's got its own rabid fan base for sure. And it also definitely inspired projects that are out there. I also believe that Lazarus, which is built on top of free Pascal, is also capable of working with, yeah, is a Delphi compatible cross-platform IDE. So if you want to get your Delphi on and you don't want to have a revenue limitation, or you want to work in Pascal and you want a free and open source project with a drag and drop form designer, check out Project Lazarus. This is actually not something I have checked out. I haven't used Pascal in 15, 20 years. So, um, yeah, if you have, do be sure to check out Lazarus. Now, next up, we have Hacks Develop. Now, Hacks Development seems to be going more and more towards extensions for programs such as, um, you know, Visual Studio Code, Sublime Text, that kind of stuff. Uh, but there actually is a full-blown first-class Hacks Language Integration IDE out there, and it actually works really well. If you're just starting to get started with um, with Hacks Development in general, Hacks Develop is a great starting point with one huge caveat. It is Windows only. 
So if you're working on Windows and you want to check it out, do check out Hacks Develop. Now, again, it hasn't been updated in over a year now, so it may actually be dead now. I'm not 100% certain there. Um, and then our final IDE here is a very specialized one. This is Zero Brain or Zero Brain, Zero Brain. I have no idea how you actually say that, but Zero Brain is what I'm going with. Uh, Studio, this is a lightweight IDE for Lua code. Now, this guy is very focused on game development. As you can see, full debugging support for Love, Corona, Moi, Gitteros, Marmalade, Cocos 2DX and other Lua based uh, game engines. So if you're working in Lua and you want development and you want an integrated tool, Zero Brain Studio is actually a really, really good choice. Now this guy is donation based. So uh, if you want to support the project, you can sign to send some money there when you go to download it. But I do not believe that that is a requirement to use it in a commercial setting. Uh, it's a great open source tool for um, Lua development, but specifically just Lua development, by the way. And that is the list. So that is the integrated development environments for the game, uh, the dev game, free game development tools list. Hopefully you learned at least one thing today. And again, if something you were looking for wasn't on the list, do be sure to check out the text editor setting more and more every day. The line between an IDE and a text editor is getting blurrier and blurrier and blurrier. It's kind of ironic because way back in the day, Emacs and Vim, those were pretty much full-blown IEEs as well. So I guess it's not a new thing, but you'll find tools such as Visual Studio Code, um, brackets, oh, Komodo, I did it twice, oops, uh, and so on on this list. So if you saw something missing here, it was probably in the text editor list. Uh, so do be sure to check that out as well. And that's it for now. If I miss something, an IDE that's, um, that's still under development or still uh, modern, please do let me know and I will add it to the list. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.